What's up, tricksters? My name is Charlatan. I'm a former CSGO and PUBG professional player and Valorant Challenger player from close beta with over 50,000 hours of esports experience in general. And in today's video, I'm going to give you my first gameplay impressions, opinions, and somewhat my professional gaming insight on how the new Valorant map could potentially be played in future. What should be the default setup for defending and the main point for attacking side. The map is called Ascent and it is placed in Bellissima Italia. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the action. Let's begin, my dear tricksters, with the overview of the newest Valorant map called Ascent. I'm going to give you my opinions on how I'm going to actually play the defaults on this map, how I'm going to defend bomb sites and how I'm going to attack when the ranked games comes out. Also in unrated you can use these tactics and these strategies, but I'm just going to give you my somewhat professional opinion since I've been playing FPS games for a long time and I've seen a lot a lot of maps and I must say that this map really re resembles the classic CSGO maps like Dust 2, Mirage etc. and uh, it is going to probably be played like that. It really reminds me of Split in Valorant a lot because you have this mid area, this really really long mid area, which I think it is mandatory to be controlled. And then you have this B long area and A long area. On B site we have a lot of different angles which you can hold. You can actually play a lot of different angles which are viable positions in my opinion. So, there are different type of angles which you can take with, with Jet, with Sage and uh, the characters that are able to climb these spots and you can surprise your enemies, especially if you're playing Operator, from these positions. Then, you can also play the B area kinda passive, so you can hold some positions like this. One, one guy stands in this position, the other guy holds this position and you make some, some kind of a crossfire, but then you are giving the enemies a lot of things with which they can work like they can then go mid maybe attack a like uh, trick you a bit so that's not really a viable way to play the b bomb site but it's something that you can try maybe in lower ranks etc so when you're playing the b bomb site in my opinion i would never play this area here like this is a really closed area and if the enemies five enemies are rushing you here one guy standing here he isn't going to going to do much in my opinion i would always try to make some kind of a crossfire for an example one guy playing here so he can fall back right in this position then maybe one guy playing this off angle here which is really good in my opinion like this off angle i found a lot of headshots here of course if the enemies rush you here or they boost in this wall here which i'm going to, going to show you later on they can Take you easily down but if you're playing jet for an example or maybe raise you can easily dash or use c4 pack to blow yourself away and get back on b bomb site or try to play this angle here so one more off angle which you can i mean it's not off angle it's really viable and usable angle if you're playing some kind of a crossfire on b bomb site so for example one guy can be standing here and baiting the enemies basically to cross into this B area here, B bombsite area. Then the other guy uses this angle here and you can make somewhat of a crossfire and stop the enemy push. In my opinion, taking this area here is really, really risky and I wouldn't do it unless you have some kind of a smoke or vision disrupting ability. So you can place it here and attack this uh, B long area or if you're playing brimstone you can easily smoke this and you can take this orb which is placed right onto this box but remember when you're taking this uh, orb you enemies can actually see you if they are on this box even if this area is smoked if if you have smoke here enemies can easily take your head off from this position so be really really careful when taking this orb this orb is a really really risky orb for both sides in my opinion especially for defenders because on b side i would never play more than two guys one guy 
is maybe enough. If he is able to play somewhat uh, safe angle, for an example like this, or maybe this position here so he can easily fall back down and wait for reinforcement from A side and mid, but uh, taking alone this long area, I think I would never do it because you have a lot of angles which you need to cover and this is the starting position for the attackers so you need to clear this corner here you you maybe will have enemies up here maybe enemy can be there then you, you need to jump here you need to take the orb you're all already overly exposed so in my opinion B bomb site looks really interesting and in my opinion I would never play more than two guys like one guy I think he's able to hold this B bomb site quite like okay if you have an operator somewhere here operator here or maybe you're holding the B bomb site from this angle here like I think that would be enough uh, unless the enemies do some kind of a uh, sage wall boost if, if the enemies have sage they can easily boost the sage the two or three teammates on these walls here and they can check the whole bomb site they can see that area there they can see the area there so you're kind of screwed up if they have that sage wall but if enemies don't have sage i think one guy is more than enough to hold the b long area alone if he's unable to hold the b long area alone of course you can rotate you can switch up the tactic and you can use two guys on b area i would never play the the bomb site like only in maybe eco or force rounds when you are trying to surprise the enemies and play some kind of angle like this or i don't know some, some tricky position like this is a headshot position but hiding here and uh, doing some weird like maybe in lower elos like uh, below diamond that will work out really good but uh, in higher elos in immortal and challenger like being this this uh, this closed into the bomb site is never never good one more thing that I need to note, you cannot stand on this roof, unfortunately. I don't know why they made that design, probably to avoid this kind of peak. Uh, you can slide on it, but you cannot stand on it. So that is one thing that you need to note, so you don't waste your abilities. And you also have these doors here. Basically, what you can do, you can cut off the whole mid area and fall back all of your guys from mid and play really really passive so you can play this angle here and one guy on b side can play this angle here and he knows that the enemies cannot come from here because the guy is playing this angle here so that is one type of action that you can do i would usually do something like this when you are four versus five or three versus five and you are unable to hold all the angles so these doors are probably meant to be used in that kind of way in those situations when you lose one guy on defending side artistically this map looks amazing like art style of this map is really good these doors these mechanics are really interesting to see like this is something that other fps games don't have especially csgo like doesn't have any interactive objects like this so i'm really loving to see some kind of a uh, unique design being put into Valorant. The second important thing for defenders on this map is mid control. In my opinion, mid control is going to be everything on this map. If attackers have full mid control, they can decide whether they want to split A through A short and A long, or maybe they want to split B through B long and B short, or they want to do some kind of weird tactic through spawn. So mid control is going to be mandatory on this map because it is going to be played like a classic CSGO map in my opinion. These walls here are there to prevent the early spam from, from, from A short from the defenders, which would be kind of broken a bit in my opinion because you, you wouldn't have any chance because the spawn of attackers is right here and then you would just die instantly here. So that is why they put those two barriers here so you can easily try to peek play some kind of smokes and take this area here if you are playing defending side on this map i would usually put one guy on mid i will tell one guy to go mid he can play whatever like there's a lot of corners on mid that you can play you can hold mid from here you can hold mid from here but i would usually hold mid from here and try to hold this long area here alone and try to kill these enemies here you can also use this position 
if you're playing Jet or maybe playing, uh, I don't know, Raze and you have the C4 Blast Pack or something like that, and you can easily snipe people from this position here. And I would play two guys on A short, one guy watching this angle here, long, long corridor angle, and one guy being close to this box and helping this guy if he is getting pushed or he misses the shot. So I would always put three guys on defender's side at mid area to take that mid control. If the enemies are attacking B and you're playing only one guy B, this guy can easily do a fast rotation here and throw some grenade here, some molotov, smoke, whatever he has. If the enemies are attacking the A area, one guy from A short or maybe both guys from A short can fall back and help the area through this A short link. A site looks also pretty default. There, there's nothing special to A site except these doors that are usually used for uh, stopping those uh, pushes. If you lose the mid control, you can just use these doors and fall back one guy here and you can hold passive positions. If you, for, for an example, lose the guy that, that was playing uh, uh, this position here. If this guy dies, this second guy from A short can fall back. The guy on A long or A side closes these doors and you can hold the A side passively. You have one guy mid, one guy is here, one guy is on A side and you still have really really good strong positions which you can play. This guy doesn't have to play this window here. He can also play this grass here or maybe some off angle like this and try to surprise the enemies which is really viable and this position is also OP because no one aims this high and they will never expect you to be on these boxes. So these doors are mainly being used not for post plan posi for post plan situations but for defenders to just cut out one area from attackers. Yeah, they are easily being broken but for a short period of time you will not have to worry about these this whole a link area and if you're playing a site you can focus on stopping the push from a long for an example and whole a site is kind of generic basically from spawn you take this ramp up here you have two options you can play a short area here i already show you some of the off angles and really cool positions that you can take to stop the push from a link if they take the mid area then you have this a link area here which you can play if you've lost one guy on mid and you need to play more passive positions like you have different angles and different corners which you can take i would never recommend you to play this corner and this corner here it is easily being cleared by one molotov so it's kind of useless to play that angle all the time on mid area you can be creative you can just be creative you can put one brimstone smoke here at the beginning maybe brimstone smoke there if you have jet you can boost here and wait for the enemies try to kill them here then maybe you kill one two enemies disengage etc the a site generally looks very generic like every other site in every other map like especially in csgo it looks like some kind of a mirage or cache so you have different angles which you can play with sniper, with rifles. For example, this is a really risky angle and I would only play it maybe with rays or, or jet, in my opinion, because this box can be penetrated. And on this area you can usually play the operator because you have the fast cover, even though this wall can be penetrated with, with the high penetration weapons, still you're able to take somewhat of a cover and try to pull back. And this area here, under heaven, is really interesting this is somewhat of a post plant position or a surprise position which you can take in some situations i don't see myself really playing in this close ang corridor where i can just be cleared with one smoke or brimstone ultimate or i i can get destroyed from many many angles so this position i would play only to surprise enemies or maybe in lower ranks i don't know i would usually hold this reactor here because you cannot penetrate the whole reactor even if you shoot through it. So I would take this as a cover to hold the A long area usually, or I just rotate around these boxes and try to surprise my enemies from different angles and peaks. What I see a lot of people do, they, they hold uh, this angle here, but uh, once the enemies have the A long area, like you're kind of screwed here because you cannot really fall back because the enemies will destroy you so if you don't have smoke or some kind of vision disrupting ability 
you're kind of screwed if you play that angle. Maybe you can play to surprise the enemies a few times or make some kind of a crossfire here. But like this is the most safe area to play. Rotating around this, this uh, re re reactor, reactor Chernobyl. I, I, I don't know how to call it to be honest. Or try to play some kind of a crossfire with guy here and try to surprise your enemies. In my opinion, I would never play this corner here it's really risky like this is the a cubby corner in a long i don't really think this is a smart move maybe if you have a shorty and you just wanna try try to kill one or maybe two enemies if you're lucky enough but one molotov here and you're donezo my friend if you're taking a long area it's really easy to take it because your starting position is here when you're defending and what you can do here you can simply throw one brimstone smoke never never do something reckless like play smoke here and do this if you do that there's a 90 percent of the situation you're going to die because the enemies will just spam through your smoke and try to kill you so try to play smart try to be unpredictable when you're attacking on this map i, I think you you really need mid control like you really need mid control if you want to take a site because taking a site alone with five people th through this corridor here is almost impossible if enemies have some kind of sniper there or brimstone molotov here or whatever ability to stop the push you're you're kind of you're kind of screwed in in this small corridor I, I would usually split a with uh, a long here maybe two guys a long and three guys to mid short so three guys are trying to take mid from catwalk area they can smoke this and they can fast push a, a short and uh, connect the a site with the a long uh, people or you can just uh, try to take mid and then decide what will going to happen in that round but remember when you're trying to take mid control from this area here and this area here you are exposed to so many angles like the guy can be here the guy can be here the guy can be here one guy can be back there so try to clear every corner one by one so when you're engaging mid First corner, first angle, second angle, third angle, maybe up here, fourth angle, maybe already here, maybe here, here, here. Then you have this angle here. Then you can push the catwalk and you can watch this area here. One or two guys should be watching from this side here. You're short, so they, they, they should be watching if somebody is pushing you short. In the meantime, you watch and clear this angle here. Then all two or three of you can take this short area and try to split A with other teammates. When you are taking B, you don't really need mid control that much because this B corridor is really really good for attacking, especially if you have Sage and let's be honest, Sage has a 100% pick rate in this game, so you probably have Sage in your team composition. You can just boost your team up on this wall and try to clear as many angles as 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 you can possibly clear, like this angle there, angle there, angle there, angle there. This uh, headshot angle here, a bit of backside you can also see, and then try to engage with brimstone smokes, omen smokes, jet smokes, whatever, and try to enter the B bomb site. You don't really need mid area when you are attacking the B bomb site. If you have mid control with two or three people, you can just split three two or two three, and it's going to be much easier. But those guys on mid should be really really careful because enemy can be here enemy can be here it can be on, on a very weird positions like this one you should you can never expect the guy up there you will usually aim on this level here and you up oh, you need to flick a lot so always try to be careful and try to check one corner at a time one corner at a time then maybe somebody ct maybe somebody's calling that then you split your with your people on the b bomb site but in my opinion I think you don't need a mid area in order to take the B bomb site. You should also be careful of this position here. The enemies are only seeing your head and they can easily one tap you from this position here and you will die instantly if they are playing Vandal for example or Guardian. So always try to look out for those weird angles on this map. This map is really unique. It's something different and, and it has that Valorant vibe, Valorant feel but in the same time like a bomb site and mid area really looks like <laughs> like something that is taken from CS:GO and you can utilize your agent abilities in a various different ways for example if you're playing jet and you hear the enemies are pushing b 
use your ultimate. One dash, bam, headshot. One dash, bam, second headshot. If you're playing raids, you have you have the C4 satchel. You use the ultimate, C4 here, bam, destroy the enemies. So try to be creative. Try to think other ways how you can use the your utility and your agents. Every single agent is unique and it can defend those bomb sites in a unique way. My overall impression, the map is really good. It is well designed. It has a lot of CSGO feel, but that's totally okay with me. You need to remember, like, when you are designing a game, or when you are designing a map, or whatever you are designing in video gaming industry, like, uh, you should always take 70% of something that is already working, and the maps in CSGO are almost perfect. Why not copy them if they are working perfectly, in my opinion? Like, Dust2, Cash, Mirage, they're one of the most balanced and well-designed maps, in my opinion, ever in CSGO history. Then you take 20% from other games, maybe Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, etc. And add 10% of Valorant on your map and you have a perfect Valorant map, in my opinion. So <laughs> the map feels good. I personally didn't have time to get adjusted to it. Like I'm not adjusted to all the angles, like which angles I need to pre-peek, pre-shoot. That is something that you practice over the time as you play the map and you can also practice on offline servers. I don't really have anything more to add. This has been already the second video and we have to cover the patch notes, agent tier list, uh, how to rank up faster in Valorant, a lot, a lot of new videos coming. I love this new map. I'm not adjusted to it. I'm not really good on this map yet, but you know, Papito Charlatano is going to get that challenger rank anyways when the season one of Valorant begins as he was in close beta. And on that note, this concludes my overall impressions and opinions on the newest Valorant map. If you would like to see more of these videos from me, hit that subscribe, turn on those goddamn notifications and spank that bell icon so you don't miss any new content from me, myself, Charlatano. Leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below. What do you think about this new map? Hmm? What do you think? I wanna know. In the meantime, you can also share this video and spread the word about this channel with everyone you know. In the description you have other social media where you can follow me for some future live live streams and announcements. And you can also join my official Discord server, I want to keep in touch with all of you, my dear friends. I'm yours, one and only, more than all the Valorant community, thank you for watching and CUT!